are under siege. We're not releasing their control plan only on Tuesday and basically saying they're going to launch straight into the culling. So it's been all hands to the pump. The Department of Conservation's plan to control tar is heading to court. There are concerns that there are too many of the mountain goats and they're eating our southern native flora and fauna. Well, the issue we've got is that there hasn't been sufficient science done on the population or on the effect it's having on the environment. That's, that's the, the first two things. We'd like to see the numbers brought down and then um, work at shrinking their range with a goal of extermination. The foundation is an organisation that re represents everybody with an interest in tar. Well, it seems like there's quite a lot of them because um, you guys set up a uh, give a little page because I, I know you're going to try and fight what's going on in the courts. South Island, we did a lot of tar hunting. The whole idea of this hunt was to raise money against the uh, Tarmageddon. So we uh, came up with the idea of doing a couple of tar for these guys. We were able to win the competition. I bought a ticket to support a real worthy cause and to support the, uh, the fight against Tarmageddon. My one lonely ticket was good enough and I'm here experiencing tar hunting. It was a few days after the raffle had been drawn and I was um, a little gutted because I was just like, oh, you know, I really thought I was going to win, but it looks like it hasn't gone my way. And I was like, oh, I've got an email from Hunter's Element, I'll see what it says. And it was just, oh, we've been trying to get a hold of you, but you've given us the wrong number. Do you want to flick, <laughs> flick us the, the right number? And I was like, yeah, yeah, not sweet as, so flicked him the right number. And he finally gave me a, um, a call up and he was, Andrew was just like, so... I'm just going to ask you a few questions. It might sound a bit, you know, off at the time, but I just want to make sure I've got the right person. So you're Carl Taylor, and you brought 10 tickets, and this is your email, and this is your phone number, and really wanted to, yeah, confirm it all. And I was like, yeah, no, that's, that's definitely me. And he's like, oh, it's good, because you've won, but there's another Carl Taylor coming with you. And I was just <laughs> like, oh, okay, I think I know where this is going. He's like, yes, I tried to call you. And then the number didn't work, so then I went back onto the database and clicked on Carl Taylor, rang him up, told him he was one, got through the conversation, and then the penny kind of dropped that I think I'd called the wrong <laughs> Carl Taylor. And I was just like, oh, that's probably going to be more than a box of beers, isn't it? And he's just like, yeah, but, you know, that's good. There's two of you going to go down now. We've kept our word. And to both cows that we're gonna yeah send you down on the trip and I was like no nah, I reckon that's awesome the more the more the merrier I reckon on hunts like this getting us down there. You've got to realise that the Himalayan tar are an endangered species in their homeland in the Himalayas. We were gifted some in 1904 by the Duke of Bedford and they've established reasonably well in our high country and this is pretty much the only place in the world where there's reasonable numbers where you can see them and certainly where you can hunt them. on the way back to the U, does he? <laughs> no. I've always been a hunter down here. I'm based in Wanaka. Hunted tar all my life. I take my kids tar hunting. It's something that uh, I really enjoy getting out there and pushing it, the mental challenge, the fitness. And when Eugene Sage came into power and she wanted to get rid of all the tar, it really struck a nerve with me. 
especially. I'd hate to think that my kids can't get out there and hunt tar. And, I mean, why else would you get out into the mountains, really? If there's no tar there, yeah. nobody's really going to go out to the mountains. Doc said, OK, well, how can we work this out with hunters? And we said, well, we accept there probably is too many tar. Let's remove the nannies because, you know, they don't, they're do not they not the ones holding value. We only need X amount of nannies, say, to keep breeding the bulls. And we've just removed 15,000. So we thought we were continuing this great relationship with Doc and stakeholders. Uh, we, we thought we were just going to continue to keep on top uh, of the nanny population. This month, Doc, the Department of Conservation, sent in the helicopter hunters to destroy the tar. We get this plan. It's a three-fold increase in culling hours, which is huge given uh, the lower animal base we're starting with. And for the first time in many years, they're going to be targeting bulls, which are the highly valued animal. Uh, they're going to be culling those bulls and leaving them to rot. I think it was some of those Facebook videos that were going around about the choppers dropping tar balls. Oh, he's in the tree. Yeah, he just shot it. Bull tar. Dirty bastard. Here's what we're looking at. Bull tar. I watched that because the friend one. Yeah, yeah. It was an unsettling feeling. Like I kind of knew what happened and like keeping control. And I was like, yeah. But then just watching. Watching the shoot balls. Just mm. watching, and it was like the bang, and then just seeing it drop. Chopper goes. And I was just like, you can't it's leave. Like, I was just like, you can't leave it here. You have to do something. That's what we're dealing with at the moment, guys. Bullshit. All us hunters want is good management, and I agree. Animals have to be culled, without a doubt. We've got to keep on top of the nannies and the females. I think it struck a nerve of every hunter in New Zealand, and that's why it becomes such a big thing overnight. There he goes. Yeah. That's yeah, it. got him. Yeah, he's fucking running. Come on, stop. I don't know where you hit him. This thing's here, move. I think you hit him in the, near he's the back. Oh, down. he's down. I see. Yeah, he's over. Awesome, man. Good work. Good Thank you. Good work. Good on that without you. Oh, mate. Nice, eh? Hey? Thank you. I mean, he will have a beautiful yellow skin under all this. Oh, he's got a few aprons in there. Yep. Four, five, six, seven, eight. He's quite old. Oh, yeah. That's old. The two of all. Yep. Nice it's little it's good. curved back. It's beautiful. For a day like today, yeah. he's outstanding. <laughs> Oh no, thank you mate. It's good stuff, I'm so pleased you got one. This is epic. It's only even cold now.
Cheers, bro. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> The prize itself is always going to be a bonus. It's always about supporting the raffle and the cause behind the raffle. Yeah, so no, an awesome first time experience. I, I just couldn't have planned it any better. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought and what it was going to be, and it's turned out the right way. It was good to get that phone call from Hunter's Element, and I jumped on board straight away. Great cause. And one tail turned into two tails. Yeah, no, appreciate oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got to meet a great guy. Yes, yeah, awesome. That's good times. Definitely here, memories for a lifetime. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, this bloody, is bloody awesome. Mm. This is pretty hot. Ah. We are the lucky ones, and, and when we feel lucky, but we have to have a big cheers to all those that put their money in, put their hands in their pockets, Hunter's mm. Element, everyone that's got behind this thing and truly supported a great cause. It shows what hunters can do if we band together. And United Front, good. it can win, yeah. yeah. And already we've seen a change in policy from Doc about managing numbers and shooting targets. They've had a, a more cooperative, Definitely. informative um, opinion of it. So yeah, we can make a difference if we stick together, yep. but truly thankful to everybody that put their hand in their pocket and for whatever reason, they thought this was a worthy cause.